Okay, last but not least, or actually not last but not least, but the last of the nutrition, the ones that add to your calories. So this is we're going to talk about proteins. So proteins, the, there are so many different proteins. There's like, they are the workhorses of your cells. They're forming a lot of the structures of your cells. They form the moving parts of your cells. They're most of their enzymes in your body. They're proteins. They do so much in your, so, so they're ju not just anatomy and structures, but they're also a lot about the chemistry and physiology as well. So proteins in general, they contain carbon, well, the organic molecules contain hydro, hydrogen and carbon, but proteins contain carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. So the basic parts, so remember how like monosaccharides, you can make a polysaccharide like, or polysaccharides like starch or glycogen from monosaccharides? Well, proteins are made out of smaller units called amino acids. So there are many types of amino acids, but when you build a long amino acids into a long chain, this is when you get a protein. So there are 20 standard amino acids, and that's all I expect you to know at this level. If you go on to maybe cell biology, I'm not sure if they teach it in bio, was it 265, 275? I forgot. But there is a special one called selenocysteine. Don't worry about for this class. And I believe there's another one like in RK bacteria called like pyrolysine. Don't worry about that one either for this class. But the ones that build proteins, the basic standard ones, that is, these are, there are 20 standard amino acids. So the protein structure, so what is amino acid? So we see a simple amino acid structure over here. And then what happens with the protein or, poly, or actually polypeptides is that there are long chains of amino acids. So this is what we, this is the same chemical structure that carbon, oxygen, oxygen, hydrogen, you see with a carboxyl group in the fatty acid. But now it has this amine group. So it refers to this part right here. So this nitrogen atom, you don't find that in the fatty acid. You don't find that in like so carbohydrates like glucose. But or actually, let's rewind that part. So this is like amino acids are different from fatty acids for sure. Now, amino acids, they all have this basic structure. But between different types of amino acids, they have something called a variable group or side chain. And it's represented as R. Now, it's not referring to the atomic element R. It's just saying that between different types of amino acids, you can have multiple atoms or sometimes just a single atom linked to this basic common groups you see in all amino acids. So this part, it varies. And here's a list of all the, oh, this one set is comprehensive. It has 21 amino acids. Again, for this class, don't worry about selenocysteine. Actually, it has selenocysteine over here. Cool. But notice that this part over here on the top in, in these diagrams, it's all consistent. It's just that part that dangles down that makes the differences between all of these amino acids. Now, now, now we have to talk about peptide bonds. So here we have two amino acids, and notice that they're mostly the same. It's just that the side chain is different. Here we have a single hydrogen atom here, and here we have a methyl group. Now, peptide bonds, these are what link amino acids. So what we have here is that we have amino group, amine group over here, and it's going to have a synthesis reaction between amine and this car, this amine group and this carboxyl group. So this part right here is going to actually pop off a water molecule. So remember it's that dehydration synthesis reaction, like the one we saw between glucose and fructose to make sucrose. So it's very similar that you have the synthesis of a larger molecule from two smaller molecules. So this bond right here, so there are many bonds in this structure, but this specific bond that happened between these groups, that's what we call a peptide bond. So peptide bonds, these are new bonds between these amino and carboxyl groups, this between this carbon and nitrogen. And so this is my definition, like you can talk about the biochemical definition, but this is all what I want you to know for this class. So this is just like basically peptide bonds are what join amino acids. That's pretty simple, right? So if you have many, many, so remember that poly prefix, that root word? 
If you have many peptide bonds together, this is what you have with the long chain of amino acids. So if you have a long chain of amino acids linked with uh, many peptide bonds, you have a polypeptide. So again, 20, and not including selenocysteine, you have 20 different amino acids. So if you have all these amino acids with different side chains, but the thing is that between each amino acids, you have a peptide bond. So if you have many of these peptide bonds linking a long daisy chain of amino acids, you have a polypeptide. So again, this refers to some, and there's some other small terms regarding peptides, but don't worry too much at this point. So again, what I'm getting at here, so if you have a polymer of amino acids, so you take these basic building blocks of amino acids, link a lot of them with peptide bonds, you have a polypeptide. So a polypeptide is a polymer of amino acids. Now, the thing is that with the proteins, like this is, um, again, very complex chemical structure showing that uh, all these angles here would, they would be carbon, but you can see that they have all these atoms linked together. So this is actually the structure of what a probably familiar hormone and maybe medicine if you have a diabetic, uh, if you're a diabetic or know someone who has diabetes. Well, this is insulin and it has a very complex chemical structure if you look at the individual atoms. So when you're talking about the protein primary structure, you're talking about how it looks like a sequence of amino acids if you stretch it out into a long chain. So that's what we have here. I like so I like to use an analogy. This is a molecule of hair, but when you're talking about, you ask someone to show you a picture of hair, are they going to show you a super zoomed in version of that? So think of it this way: a protein's primary structure is like that sequence of amino acid, but it's like the highest resolution, most detailed probably more information than you need when you're talking about the protein. So here's a secondary structure of a protein. So remember, proteins are made out of polypeptides, and polypeptides have these long, long lengthy structures. There are all these amino acids linked together. So here we have an alpha helix, and here's a bunch of, so this ribbon is representing a chain of amino acids, but you can also twist these amino acid chains into shapes. So what we have here is kind of like this alpha helix is kind of like rolling, uh, like like if you have seen someone with dreadlocks, they kind of roll their hair together to form a bigger structure. So that's what you're kind of doing with the secondary structure of a polypeptide or a protein, is that you're kind of like folding it and making more complex structures over from a single strand. And here's a beta sheet. That's another example of that. Now tertiary structure, well, this is when you're taking those basic structures and making even more complex structures. So you're folding and making a 3D arrangement. So here we have an alpha helix like in that secondary structure. So I like to think of it this way, like in those previous examples, I showed you like that strand of hair. I also showed you that like different ways you can make style strands of hair. Well, if you have multiple of these structures linked together, you can have fancier and fancier structures. So as you go from primary to secondary to tertiary, you're able to build more and more complex structures. So again, and then with quaternary structures. So here's an example of a protein that has a quaternary structure. So common th pitfall when you're first learning about proteins is you think one pellet, all proteins are just one polypeptide. So some proteins actually have multiple polypeptides linked together to form one functional protein. So in a single molecule of hemoglobin, you actually have four protein chains. So there are actually four separate polypeptide chains that are folded together and they form a larger structure called hemoglobin in this case. So it's not just one pro a protein, all proteins have just one polypeptide. Sometimes proteins, you actually need to make multi bring multiple polypeptides together to form a full protein molecule. So to extend my hair analogy, what is a, would be a hair analogy for a quaternary structure? Well, in the tertiary, we saw those complex hairstyles. Quaternary structure is like if you tip two tertiary structures and put them together. So like this. So it's not just hemoglobin, but like collagen as well. Collagen is actually all of these molecules over here. These are three polypeptides linked together and kind of twisted together and braided together. So that's why I'm kind of drawing that analogy and the difference between tertiary and quaternary. If there's more than one polypeptide involved, it's a quaternary structure. 